Good evening and welcome to our Tuesday night sew along. Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, we'll wait a few moments to see if anyone else is going to join us. I'm just checking my cable because I'm a little bit wired here, uh, not literally wired. Um, whilst we're waiting for everybody else, can I just remind you that if you comment or like or follow our channel then obviously it means a lot to us and also I am uploading these videos to YouTube so don't forget to go over to YouTube Debbie Harris Designs and subscribe to us that would be fantastic so thank you for coming along um, whilst we're waiting I know people who are, wait, who are not joined just yet are going to miss out but if you came along to see us at the Malvern Quilt Show this weekend from Thursday to Sunday thank you so much oh it was amazing we just had the best time it was so lovely what a nice venue we've never stayed in that area before so being in Malvern itself was amazing we had a great place to stay um, and we just met so many people who came over and said they'd seen us or they watch us um, so it was absolutely amazing our best selling product was the sewing machine um, pin cushion pattern Dave's mass, mass, drastically looking for it. It's downstairs, the actual um, sewing machine. But you know the one I mean, the pin cushion. Um, I've got one on the windowsill. Shall I just grab it? I'm a little bit wired up, so bear with because if I don't want to fall over and um, it's that one. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the one that we obviously buy in. So that's just the pin cushion itself. So they're still available on our website and we did sell a lot of those actually last uh, at the weekend but if you remember i've written the pattern for that so you can buy the pattern so much so that we sold out on saturday we'd sold out by saturday of the patterns we'd taken and we've had to we had to order some more print go ring the printer uh, get in touch with him and he printed some more for us so we posted some more out yesterday and today we had loads of orders for that so thank you very much for those this one was my very first prototype so I took the sewing machine pincushion that we had that everybody just loved and so many of you um, in London and especially at the NEC were saying can we make one have you got a pattern uh, and I hadn't so I wrote the pattern and this was my very first attempt you can see how it's very sort of put together um, I used a little pin look for the bobbin um, and uh, yeah, so that was that was my very first one, but obviously the one that I've done since uh, looks a bit more like that. And it's in the Macawa fabric, but that's a couple of years old now. So if you do want that Macawa fabric, um, it's the, this is Make Do Amend. I think it's Stitching Time, the other one. We've got one or two fat quarters left, that's all. And I think we've got one or two kits available as well where you just get, it's not the kit kit, the full kit, but you get the fabric to make it a uh, fat quarter and obviously the pattern. And all the templates and everything are in the pattern. So they were our best seller this weekend. It was fabulous, we loved it. Then fo closely followed by Millie Doll and what was the next one? Can't think what the next one was. Rosie Rabbit was fairly popular, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we just we just had the best time. So thank you very much if you came along to see us. So tonight we're going to be looking at Mabel and Deb's um, tote bag. So this was my very first pattern. This is how you get the pattern when you receive them from us. So it comes in a nice little plastic wallet. I'll take it out. And I just want to show you a, a little bit about our patterns. So you can see, because from the cover, you can't obviously see what the patterns are like. So all my patterns follow a similar theme and they've all got, I'm going to go over here, join me, join me. Um, so you've got obviously the picture of the, what, what the item is. And then every stage is a photograph and um, a step on, uh, an instruction on what to do. And a photograph of me doing that actual thing, whether it's ironing or pressing the seams open or adding a handle or whatever and then on the back it will tell you everything you need to make that um, item so that's what our patterns look like so i just wanted to give you a brief overview if you've not bought one before and they're very nice quality how they're printed so we're going to be looking today at um, a few techniques about bag making 
ask feel free to ask me any questions that you've got about bag making um and this is this week's star buy this is the, the pattern this week uh this is normally 4.99 this week it's 2.99 and as a little extra we bought in for the shows some amazing um webbing so we've got these are the meter lengths so the webbing comes in meter lengths so we've got this bright rainbow which is just lovely and we've got the pastel which is lovely again my favorite is this one sort of more muted tones you can see we've got it on a big reel so you can see there look that's from the weekend that wasn't set up it's 2.99 a meter it was at the show um but now this week as a special on our uh, additional sort of extra special star buy uh, that's 1.99 a meter which is really good value and if you want uh, we'll cut it into meter lengths but if you want a four meter length then just put four four in the units and we'll send it to you as a four meter length so it's just in one piece um and then you can cut it how you want to so we've got those three colorways the muted pastels the sort of what you'd call a regular pastel uh, shades and the bright the rainbow bright which is beautiful so they are new in and they're on the website now so i'm going to pop those down there um i will be coming back to them because we're going to do a little bit of bag making techniques have we got any questions today before I go any further? No, somebody said good evening. Hello, I can't see, I can see the video. Oh, here it is, yeah, Catherine. Hello, good evening, Debbie. Hi, Catherine. Thank you. Uh, lovely to have you along. Oh, again, it's saying the video has ended, but. It hasn't. No, it's all very strange, this technology. <laughs> oh, dear, it's good job we don't believe everything we read, isn't it? Anyway so what's on your sewing table this week if, what have you been sewing i've been um getting ready for the show obviously last week and this week i've been preparing for my appearance on sewing street this sunday where i'm taking my new large hexagon quilt because you know i love a hexagon so i've designed a new large hexagon quilt with jelly rolls i'll also be revisiting the epp lap quilt and you'll know how to epp now because we did that last week and the your home and you pattern as well you know the one with the bees um and there's some lovely panels this week lavender um what else is there i can't think they're all they're brand new i've not actually seen them in the flesh so they're on their way to me um and then i'm also this week absolutely thrilled to tell you that i'm also on yarn lane on monday so monday at 12 o'clock uh, I'll be on Yarn Lane um, bringing you some items, some beautiful cushions and two blankets from Wool Couture. Uh, have a look at their website. Oh my God, it's right up my street. Really, a bit like the, the webbing, bright, um, rainbowy colours, stripes, uh, chunky wool, chunky yarn, big needles, perfect for beginners, absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'm also showing um, a macrame set and an embroidery set, little rainbows. So they are just amazing. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be doing your lane. So I will see you there if you're a, if you're a watcher of those channels. So I'm there Sunday and Monday. Oh, lovely! I'm so happy. Denise, how wide is the webbing? How wide is the webbing? I think. Let's double check. It's an inch and a half. I think. Let's have a look. Um. Hmm, that's a strange measurement look. Let me look. Let me look properly. It looks like it's just over an inch. Oh my goodness, it's alive. Yeah, it's an inch and a half. Inch and a half wide. So it's a nice um nice size the webbing because it's I find if you have a webbing, I've got this here. This is more like a herringbone, not as thick. Um, and this is just an inch. Now look at the difference. Just that, let me pop that back up there because if I don't, I won't find it again. That's an inch. Now this is just, yeah, this is what you'd use for more of an apron strap or something rather than a bag. Um, but look at that extra half an inch, how much strength it gives you width wise. And it, you can see it's quite strong. It's a lovely strong webbing. So yeah, inch and a half that. So if you're buying any bag hardware, we've got some bag hardware on the website as well. So if you've got anything 
um, that is if you're looking for some uh, sliders or some buckles or uh, the lobster clasps that go on this side of bags anything you're looking for like that we've got a few different um, different ranges um, and the webbing is an inch and a half then obviously you'll need the bag hardware that's an inch and a half what's an inch and a half in millimeters I'm not very good 38 millimeters so if you want it in millimeter millimeters 38 millimeters I'm not very good at conversions but anyway so yeah that's the size that you want to order your, your hardware in but i'm not using any bag hardware any sliders or anything like that today I, um, i'm just going to show you about how talk about handles and how to put them in a lined tote bag uh, i'm going to be looking at magnetic clasps uh talking a little bit about zips and what was the other thing making handles as well so you might not want to use the webbing handles i'm going to show you how to make handles out of the actual fabric that you're making your bag in okay have we got any more questions oh, that's, no. you're welcome denise okay so i'm going to make i'm, I'm not going to follow the actual pattern tonight because obviously if you want to make the maybelline dead three panel tote bag obviously that pan that pattern is available for you um on offer this week so I'm just going to show you a few techniques. So you know I like, I've got my bee fabric here, you know I like a few bees. And I'm going to use this as the um, for the handle, the hex. You see, the good thing about bees is obviously it doubles up with hexagons, so it's both of my favourite things in one. Um, this one is I'm going to use as the outer fabric for my bag. And this one I'm going to use as my lining. But as I say, we won't have a finished bag today. That's not what we're doing as such. But I'm just going to use these bits. Can you come this side, Dave, maybe over sort of my... So you get a good sure. view. Yeah, maybe. Just so you can get a good view. So I've got my rotating cutting mat. And I'm just going to... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You know I like to iron it first. So let's give the fabric a good press. Um so that we've got a nice piece of fabric to work with. Um, let's see if I need some better press on this, it'll just get rid of those creases. Because when you've, you probably find the same, when you've got some fabric that has been stored nicely in your um, fabric storage, obviously those creases just stay in a little bit, don't they? So I'm just going to iron them out, I like them out. So pop that up there on Alexa. And then I'll get my um, cutting mat. And then I've just got this, this is not relevant to what we're doing at all, but it's just a log cabin. Is it going to fit on that board? It's a little bit big. Um, log cabin ruler, that's a bit big. Let me grab my other one. Because otherwise it will be too big for the board just as a template really for me to cut around so that I can just make a little bag. I'll show you the makings of a little bag. So I've got my ruler, um, I'll use my rotary cutter and I'll just cut round the ruler. So if you've, if you've got one of these Creative Grids um, rulers or a, a similar ruler, you can use them obviously as templates. They're not just um, for what you bought them for you can use them as just a normal ruler but make sure I'm a little bit I feel a little bit cack handed here because I've not got an awful lot of space I think I said to you last week normally um, I would cut downstairs on my um, kitchen I've got a little island it sounds grand it's not um, but just a little kitchen island from Ikea and that's my cutting table in the kitchen so that's where I would normally cut my fabric so this feels a little bit tight for me. But you work with the space you've got, don't you? So always ironing, press your fabric out, and then I'll do exactly the same. So I've got two pieces for the front and the back of my bag. Oh, hang on. These are really good, these. Um, rulers because like I say you can use them as a ruler if you needed a straight line or a measurement don't forget though of course they've got the seam allowance added on but I find them really good for things like this where I'm needing a square as a template 
Oh, just be careful that uh, you don't cut your fingers. Oh my goodness. Last week, it was, I don't know if I told you actually, whether it was a week before, I did have a bit of an accident with the, uh, with the um, needle on the sewing machine. Oh, but my thumb is healing nicely now. Okay, so imagine that they're the front and the back of the bag. So you've got your two lovely bits of fabric there. And what we're going to do is then cut the... S what? Debbie says, is that a rotating mat I see that you aren't using? <laughs> yes. That's a perfect point. Yeah, I don't use it as a rotating mat, you know don't use it it's because my fabric is so big and I'm in a small spot um, yes I wasn't using it as a rotating mat let's do exactly that so what I'll do is cut this down that's a very good point isn't it isn't it funny when other people can see you you can't see yourself and someone's going uh, hello so this is gonna be um, oh, this was going to be the outer, actually, wasn't it? Right, let's use this properly. There we go. What do you find with these really rotating mats? They don't always stay on that centre thing. We had this before, didn't we? I don't always find that they stay very central on that rotating part. Which is probably why I choose not to use it. There we go. That's a better demo for you, isn't it? Okay, so get rid of the bits and bobs. So there's the front of the bag. That was a much better use of my rotating mat. And then what I'm gonna do is show you, imagine that this was the front of the bag. So this is your outer fabric. These are the lining pieces. And if you were using a piece of webbing, so I thought this just looked lovely. Look at that, how pastel it is with the bees. So imagine that, like I say, this is your lining piece, this is your outer piece, and then you were going to make a side of the bag. So you'd make one side and then the other, so the front and the back are separate. And imagine that that, in fact, I'm gonna leave that, that's a meter length. And I can just about see, you'll see through my, um, I've got a, I put, always put a top cover on my, this is a June Taylor cut and um, press mat. So I always cover it because they get quite dirty, but I can still see the lines underneath. So I'm going to go in about an inch and a half with those straps. When you're putting straps on a bag, just be careful and make sure that your strap is still the same way up, you know, so that when you've got it sewn, it's right way round. You don't want to twist in it at all. So make sure it's laying flat. I'm going to pin that there and I'm going to pin it there and you can go over the edge just a little bit so I've gone over the edge just about an eighth of an inch not very much and then I'm going to place the lining piece oh, this is the outer piece sorry on top so that that strap is sandwiched in between and pin again and then when I'm, what I'm going to do is sew a quarter, well, I'm going to sew within the seam allowance here. So what I'm sewing a bag, I'd always use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew within that um, to secure those straps. So again, over to the machine. Uh, it's always set from before mine is this afternoon. 5.6 is the position for mine on a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to change that slightly to a 6.2. And what that will do is bring it so the stitches are within the seam allowance. Now, when you're putting a strap on, make sure that your strap itself is lying 45 degrees to that outside edge. Because what you'll find, especially if you only use one or two pins or you use a clip, it will move like that. And then when you finish, your strap will be at an angle. So make sure it's sitting 45 degrees to the edge of that seam. 90 degrees, sorry, God, my brain's gone tonight. 90 degrees, thank you, David. And so, so that's gonna be within the seam allowance, okay? Then I'm gonna reverse. 
finish that off. You could have gone straight across, but I always finish off. And then this one again, 90 degrees from that edge. Make sure it's in place. So never be afraid to stop, check. Take the pin out, reverse stitch at the beginning as well. Go across that seam. So you're going across the top of the strap and then finish. Okay, then back to the ironing board. And that then is secured in place so that you are happy with it. So make sure you're happy with the position. You can then make sure, you would imagine then as well, you would have your other piece. So you'd have your other lining piece, your other outer piece, and they would obviously sit uh, on top and you would sew them together. So now I'm happy with those. I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch seam right across because they're nice and secure and in place. So change your setting. Mine is back to 5.6 and then I'm going to sew all along. So those seams we just sewed, those almost like tacking stitches, are within that seam allowance so you can't see them. But it's nice and secure because you don't want a wonky, um, oh the nice green one's outside. You don't want a wonky um, strap so you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's iron those stitches, set the seam and then press it out so that the seam is nice and creased and you can see what I mean now when I was talking about that seam being 90 degrees. So the strap is 90 degrees away from the seam so can you see how it's sat absolutely perfect and then you would do the same with the other half of your bag because obviously this is just one lining piece and one right side and then I'm just going to sew that, um, press that again. It's all about the pressing. So for me, when I'm um, sewing, it's three processes. The cutting has to be right, the sewing has to be right, and then it's about the pressing, okay? And then there's your handle nicely in place. Now imagine I've got the other half of the bag on the other side, and then I'm just going to top stitch along there along that top edge. So again, make sure you, I'm going to change the needle setting because this time I want it to be really close. So seven is the maximum where the needle is right over to the right hand side on my machine. And that just means that it will sew that top stitch as close to that edge. I mean, I could do use a decorative stitch here. And that's it. So that's nicely secure. And if you think about the strap, it's obviously had three layers of stitches now. So that's really, really secure because when you are using your bag, you're obviously gonna have a bit of stress on that handle um, and that's nice and um, firm. And you can see because the handle was in place, it's sitting nicely and it's in the, the right place. So that's how you put a handle in. I'm now gonna show you how to uh, make your own handles. So I'm going to cut this fabric, this lovely hexagon fabric. So depending on the width of your handle, your strap, so if you wanted a strap that was, I'm looking for my tape measure, um, I told you I'd lose it, didn't I, if I didn't put it back, and I did put it back. If you wanted a strap that is an inch wide, then you will, you will, um, cut the fabric four inches wide because what we're going to do is fold the fabric in half and then in half again in quarters so that will whatever width you want your strap you mark multiply it by four to get the width so I'll explain what I mean here so I'm going to take my fabric you want a fairly long strap but obviously use your whatever size bag as a guide so you just decide what size you want that. Move them out of the way. So I'm going to fold this. Again, let's just cut this fabric down. So we've got a more workable size. I'm just thinking about the length because that's not actually going to be enough length, but you can get the gist of what I'm saying. So let's cut that. Get my rotating board again. And 
we're going to cut this. So imagine if I wanted an inch wide handle for my bag, I'm going to cut it four inches wide. So I haven't got my measuring ruler here, but I don't need it because I'm just going to cut the salvage edge off. So I'm still using that bottom edge to make sure it's square. And then I'm going to use the board to measure. So that's a straight edge. And then if I take that up against that straight edge, if you've seen me cut before, you'll know that I usually, I'm right handed, but I usually cut from the right hand side. I'll very often measure from this right hand side rather than the left. So I'm going to make that four inches. So I'm using my board as a, or my cutting mat as a ruler. And I'm gonna cut that four inches wide. And just get rid of the excess. Okay. And then press that fabric out so it's nice and flat and perfect. Now obviously, as I say, whatever bag you're making, if you if you buy the tote bag pattern, the measurements are in there of how wide you to do the straps and everything or you can buy the webbing that's already cut, or you can adjust the straps to however long or however wide you want them. So this is a little bit like bias binding. So I'm now gonna fold this in half and press so that that's a nice creased edge. I'm just gonna put some best press on there so that it's really nice and crisp. I do use best press a lot or starch, whatever your preferred product is because it really creases helps to crease well it either helps to flatten your creases so that they're nice and sharp and firm and it also helps to take out other unwanted creases so it's absolutely brilliant so I folded that half to the center line so it's in a quarter and now I'm folding this half to the center line so again it's to the center but I'm not going exactly to the center because then when I fold I want there to be a little bit of a gap so there's no bulk in that strap okay and then you create you press again so I've got a bit like bias binding so I folded in half folded those two in half over to the machine and this time I'm going to sew along both edges of that strap so I'm going to sew really close top stitch here and really close top stitch here. Um, I'm going to leave this setting on seven because that's as far to the right as I can get it. But because it's a top stitch, I'm going to make my the length of my top stitch a 3.2. That's my usual go to stitch length when I'm doing a top stitch. And then I'm going to sew the full length of the strap all the way down that one edge. So this is the open edge. Doesn't matter really which one you do first, but I'm doing that open edge. So this is a top decorative stitch, but you are also stitching that seam closed. Okay, and then lift your uh, foot. Oh gosh, do you know what? My machine at the minute, I'm all over the place with it because the um, automatic it needs a service so it's not doing what it would normally do and you know how you just do everything automatically there we go so lift the knee this is why i nearly chopped my thumb off the, <laughs> the other day so back over to the iron board give that a press and there's your lovely handle so you could make two of those to obviously put on your bag just the same as we did earlier with the first example make sure that it's not got a, um, a bend a twist in it now what I all also like to do if you're using two straps for the tote bag let me show you what I mean so this is one of the Mabel and Deb tote bags so you've got both of the so that's an example like I showed you earlier so you've got your strap here that's nice and uh, not twisted um, and make sure you'll see here that is the edge that is folded and the inside edge is the one where I've sewn that seam together and you'll find on the other strap it's in exactly the same direction so that just make sure that they're marrying up so that they're the same rather than having one in one direction and one in the other 
and when you're placing your straps you can see on the three panel tote bag the hat straps go directly against that centre panel so just make sure again if you're using a plain front or you are using the three panelled um, pattern that your handles are in the same position on the back and front so that it sits really nicely okay so that's a little bit about straps but as I say you could use the webbing so that that would save you this step it depends if you want your strap to match your fabric then that's going to look quite nice or you can get the webbing like we've got here that matches your fabric and looks really nice so I'm going to now show you how to use or how to insert a magnetic clasp now where's my sample gone that I just did Dave I seem to be losing things tonight where's the sample that I just did <laughs> I completely lost the plot tonight oh here it is <laughs> forgive me forgive me so here's my sample that we just made I like that strap with that those colours though it's lovely isn't it so this is your outer um, fabric and this is my lining fabric now I would put the magnetic clasp on as long as you put it on at a point where you're still obviously sewing it together it's fine but I would generally put the magnetic clasp on before the strap I just wanted to cover that first so take a little bit of your the same fabric as your uh, your lining and what we're going to do is just cut a little piece a little square it doesn't matter you're not pattern matching or anything like that i'm just going to cut a little and what this will do is uh, give your uh, lining some weight give it a bit of reinforcement and what we're going to do is measure <laughs> i've not got a ruler everything's over here here we go um, here we go. I'm not used to uh, moving things around, you see, because normally it's only me, isn't it? Of course. I want my glue pen, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to just have a pencil in my hand because it makes me feel better. So I'm just going to measure the width of this bag. So it's six and two and a half. So it's eight and a half. So to find the centre, you could either measure across four and a quarter or you could just fold it which is a lot easier so you, you can measure if you like or you can just give it a little crease and that shows me that's that center line and then i'm going to take a pen so it doesn't have to be an erasable pen but it does need to be in fact i've got a friction pen here yeah let's use a friction pen if i'm drawing on fabric i feel a lot more comfortable if it's an erasable pen so let's get the friction pen and I'm going to turn this over so that we're on the wrong side of the fabric so I can still see that crease here so the center line and I'm going to measure down an inch and a half and mark so that's my mark for the center where I'm going to have my magnetic clasp now when you get your magnetic clasps again we've got these on the website you will get um, three pieces to the clasp you'll get the thicker part which is more of the magnetic part the thin um, opposite edge of that so that's what will ma be magnetized together and you will get two of these as well uh, washers and what happens is you I always put if you if you're thinking if you think about a bag being close to your body it doesn't really matter which way you put these on but I always like to put the thicker side of that clasp as though that's going to be close to my body where I also put the uh, pocket because it's usually the thinner part that you pull away but it really doesn't matter they do the same job they they um, are magnet together so what you do is take your washer and place the center of that washer where that hole is over the dot that you've just made and then mark with your friction pen those two lines on the washer it's like a bit of a stencil take away the washer and then with your quick and pick you are going to let's stick this on oh hang on hang on I'm doing everything back to front let's do that again because what we're going to do is reinforce the fabric with that all that does let me just mark that because I can see where it was underneath all that does is reinforce it so when you pull in the bag open it's not going to pull on that fabric 
So let me do that again. See how easy it is, it doesn't take a time at all. With your quick unpick, push that in and gently through both layers, just rip the fabric. You can use your scissors, but I prefer to use quick unpick, it's easier. And then you are going to pop, so I'm gonna do it with the thicker part, that through the holes, so turn it over so it's the line inside out. Push those two prongs through to the back and that's why we've reinforced it. So it just gives it a bit of a bit more strength. Pop the washer on and then just push those open like that, you know, like a split pin. And that is your magnetic clasp on and in place. And look how lovely they look. I just think they really give it a professional look and finish it off. And then you can just press out that crease and you can't see that reinforced part or any of the friction pen marks because it's all covered up with the washer. When you're doing the other half, of course, I mean, this goes without saying, but we all do it, don't we? we? We get carried away and we're busy sewing and things. Make sure that your back and your front of your fabrics are absolutely lined up because obviously they need to meet to be able to close. So just make sure. That's why we measured halfway across and then I measured an inch and a half down from that seam allowance there. So if you do the same on the other side, you'll get a perfect match so that your bag actually closes. You can see in the pattern as well, it tells you how to put an inside pocket in. And of course you can make that bigger or smaller or you could stitch along the center. So you've got two pockets. You can personalize it however you want. You could put a little lobster clasp there so that you can then hang your keys on it. You can do whatever you want to personalize your bag. Okay, so we've talked about straps. So I call this more, let me see if there's any questions. I call this more of a strap, the one that we've made ourselves. And then, is it, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this I call more of a handle, the webbing, because they both did the same job. But you can see they give a different effect and that's an inch wide and that's an inch and a half. So that's a little bit of a, a mini masterclass on a few tips to uh, help you along the way with your bag making. I always think it's nice to have a lining on your bag because it really just reinforces it. I'll show you a couple more that I've got here. So this is the same bag, the Mabel and Deb tote bag. This was the first pattern that I made or myself <coughs> and it's here. So you've got the bag there and you can see on this one, that's that beautiful muted uh, pastel uh, webbing. I've made that handle really long because I, liked, I like a bag that's a little bit more hanging on your hip and top of your leg. Again, same magnetic clasp. And then there's this one, which is in the new tilled fabric actually. This is really nice with a thinner, um, again, just an inch wide strap uh, handle uh, that's the same color as the lining. So you can really mix. I like, I like um, to make a tote bag with denim. I use a lot of denim when, when I'm designing tote bags uh, or a canvas because I find that that is obviously just a little bit stronger if you're using that, then make sure that you are in, I interface the fab, the cotton fabric in the center. So it's the same weight as the canvas or the denim. But yeah, you can see I have a little bit of a, of a denim and canvas theme going on with my bags. Um, and I don't know about you, but I like to have a theme. I like all my bags and things to, to have a similar theme. So let me pop those on there. Um, thank you for your questions and comments. That's been really nice for you to ask and I hope that was useful. If you've got any more questions or if you're watching it later on, please type them in and I'll get back to you. I always look at my uh, Facebook and answer any questions later if I need to. Um, and I will see you next Tuesday. Don't forget that you can go on our website. The Webid is on offer. The Mabel and Deb tote bag pattern is on offer. Uh, there's other few things on there that are still on offer from the show that we did at the weekend. 
uh, and I will see you in between times if you watch Sewing Street or Yarn Lane I'll be on Sewing Street on Sunday and I'll be at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. I'll be on Yarn Lane at 12 o'clock on Monday uh, and then I'll be here again next week and we're going to be looking at soft toy making next week so lots of tips and techniques about making soft toys even if you don't actually make soft toys or if you're a little bit frightened of soft toys don't be I'm going to demystify it and it's also helpful a little few tips that I'll give you just to make 3d objects again you know we looked at them last a couple of weeks ago so it's all about seams and you know embroidery and put and embellishing things as well so it's not just about making soft toys so please pop along and see me there um and thank you very much oh they're lovely bags thank you debbie uh glad you enjoyed it i hope you found some uh, useful tips and techniques there it's all about sharing isn't it and and all of us just doing what we love together so thank you for joining me and if you join me later thank you very long uh, much for popping along and i will see you soon Take care and happy sewing.